So it's happening again. The Ethereum network is going to change. It's going to fork with the Istanbul upgrade that's going to happen very soon. So you're going to want to watch this video to find out all the details about that. And a quick disclaimer, this is not financial advice. This is just my opinion. So in this video, I'm going to talk about like what a hard fork even is, the details of all the changes that are going to happen with this network upgrade, and are you going to get free money? All right, so stick around to the end of the video where I'm going to answer that question. Before we get into all those details, really quickly, if you're new around here, I'm Gregory from Dappy Diversity. Subscribe to the channel, click the like button down below. And if you want to learn how to build blockchain technology, you can join my free training on my website over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. So what is a hard fork? Well, Ethereum Istanbul is coming out very soon is a hard fork. And that essentially means that it's a network upgrade, right? It's a change to the blockchain itself. And anytime you make a change to the blockchain, you essentially create a backwards incompatible uh, change, right? And people have to follow suit, like all the miners, all the nodes in the network have to, you know, actually make this change in order to continue using the blockchain as it's intended. So this name can be kind of confusing, right? You think about a fork, you think about a split, and that implies a lot of times, you know, something going in one direction and then something going in a different direction, right? We saw this with Ethereum Classic, right? It split into two blockchains. Ethereum Classic stayed behind and created its own blockchain and cryptocurrency and then Ethereum moved on and kind of did its own thing and went off in a completely new direction, right? And they, they haven't, you know, merged back or anything like that. They just stayed separate. So is that going to happen? Whenever Istanbul rolls out, are we going to see two new blockchains? Um, I don't think so, all right? Here's why. I don't see a critical mass of people resisting this upgrade. It takes a lot of effort uh, for, you know, a chain to split and have a remnant that stays behind and actually maintains this blockchain and gets mining rewards and then ha convincing a bunch of people to actually use it, all right? So let's move on to the next point. Like, when is this hard fork going to happen? Well, you can find this information, it's public on GitHub. So GitHub is a developer website, and this is where all the Ethereum core developers publish, you know, all their public information about you know what's going to happen with the network, all the changes. You can see the code changing in real time. Um, if you scroll down to this uh, link, you can go see the bottom. It says that uh, Wednesday, October 16th, 2019, it's very soon, um, is going to be the projected date for the main net launch. So there's a little more to it than that. Istanbul is uh, projected to happen in two phases, right? Phase one is going to contain a certain set of updates, and then phase two is going to contain a second set of updates that didn't quite make phase one, right? They're going to space them out over several months, okay? But phase one mainnet is planned to happen on October 16th of 2019. So what does that mean for the network moving forward? After October 16th, like, do you need to move your cryptocurrency? Are you going to get free cryptocurrency if your developers, all your stuff going to break? Do you need to change it? All right, so that's what I'm going to go over next. So here's a question I got at the last hard fork. Hey, so is current code still gonna work? I don't see an answer for that. I appreciate it. Like, subscribe. Awesome, thanks. So this guy's a developer and he's wondering like, hey, I've built stuff for Ethereum. I've built smart contracts, put them on the blockchain. Do I need to change anything? Do I need to upgrade them? Do I need to replace them? Um, I don't see that being necessary for this network upgrade, okay? All right, so last but not least, is this network upgrade going to give you free coins? All right. So before I answer that question, as always, this is not financial advice. No one has a crystal ball. No one can predict the future despite what anyone tells you. This is my opinion. All right. So do I think you're going to get free coins whenever this network forks? All right. I don't think so. And that goes back to that whole point I mentioned towards the beginning of the video, which is I don't see Ethereum splitting off into two blockchains, right? If it does uh, and the old network stays behind, then yeah, you would have new coins, but who knows what the life of those gonna be, right? So again, not financial advice. I don't know for sure, just my opinion, um, but that is that. So I know a lot of people disagree with me on this. So I actually released a video on the Constantinople hard fork that was attempted in January of 2019. I've got a video about that. You can check that out if you're interested because I had the same opinion back then that I didn't see you know, a hard fork creating two blockchains either. So Gabe disagrees with me. He says switching from proof of work to proof of stake is a substantial network shift, right? As well as reducing block rewards for even stakers needed to validate transactions. There's not a clear consensus in the Ethereum community as to which direction to take. Miners are, are an underestimated force whose opinions are not always acknowledged by the public. 
So yeah, I definitely see where you're coming from, Gabe. But I think that goes back to the point I mentioned a minute ago, which it takes a critical mass of miners saying, yeah, we're actually going to maintain an old copy of Ethereum, right? And then a bunch of you know holders essentially saying, yeah, we're going to hold Ethereum on this network. And then traders who actually you know, trade the currency itself and value it. It needs a community that stays. And I don't see that critical mass happening because I don't see a huge disagreement um, in the changes that are coming up. And I'm going to go over the list of the changes here um, and kind of talk about them in detail. It's be a little bit technical, but I'm going to keep it high level. So if you're not a developer, you can still watch this, still see what's going to happen uh, with the network, all the changes in detail. Okay. So I can go back to the GitHub page and see all the changes that are going to happen in this Istanbul upgrade. Okay. So we can see this is broken out into two phases, Istanbul 1 and Istanbul 2, right? We can see the accepted proposals and the uh, tentatively accepted proposals for 2. Okay. They still haven't finalized those yet, um, but those are EIPs. Ethereum Improvement Proposals. That's what it stands for. Okay. So he, these are the actual changes that are going to take into effect on October 16th. All right. So uh, I don't want to get into the crazy technical details of all of these, but a few things that I see that it's going to make the network uh, more cost effective, right? So look at this here. Call data gas cost reduction, right? And then also reduce this pre-compiled gas cost, right? And then we also see uh, rebalance testnet store gas costs with consideration of uh, S-low gas cost change, right? There's a lot of changes in optimizing the gas costs. So part of what this is doing is trying to make the Ethereum network cheaper to use, right? Anytime you, you know, make a transaction on Ethereum network, you have to pay gas. If you've ever noticed that before, like if you're sending cryptocurrency to somebody else, you send the amount, but then you pay a small fee in order to actually send that to the other person, right? And same thing if you're using like a DAP or talking to a smart contract, you can trigger functions on that smart contract and like if you ever use an ICO or something like that you can like send ether to it in order to get tokens back but you have to pay that gas fee anytime you you know trigger a transaction on the blockchain with that smart contract and what you're seeing here is a reduction in some of those fees which is going to make things a lot nicer whenever you're uh, actually having to use decentralized applications like that on Ethereum that's what Ethereum's for so it's supposed to be a decentralized application platform you see uh, some other similar like gas cost uh, reductions stuff like that but the biggest change that I want to talk about is a uh, prog proof of work or programmatic proof of work, right? This is a big change that essentially changes Ethereum's consensus algorithm, right? So Bitcoin uh, currently uses a proof of work uh, consensus algorithm. So does Ethereum right now. And the plan is to move towards a proof of stake consensus algorithm for Ethereum 2.0. But this is an incremental change that uh, is called programmatic proof of work. And the whole goal of this change in the consensus algorithm is to try to make uh, Ethereum mining more decentralized, right? I'll talk about that. So I'm going to read a little clip here that kind of explains what that means, right? So proponents of the programmatic proof of work want to flip the paradigm of cryptocurrency mining industry on its head, right? Their thought is instead of building hardware to fit the mining algorithms of somewhat wasteful of a somewhat wasteful approach, we should be using mining algorithms that are optimized for GPUs uh, to encourage the decentralization of mining, all right? So that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to minimize the competitive edge of these ASIC miners and making mining more accessible to GPUs in order to try to make the entire protocol more decentralized. Centralized, try to remove some of that barrier of entry uh, where you can use a GPU to mine and participate in the network. So another user says, is the hard fork good or bad? Well, I think it's a good thing, right? And I know some people disagree with me. I'll say it's not a good thing and for whatever reason. And that could lead to a substantial number of people like wanting to like resist the upgrade. But I don't see a critical mass, uh, you know, of those kinds of people happening to like create an old copy of Ethereum that gets maintained as this new one like takes off, right? And also like, think about it this way. Anyone could theoretically just like take the Ethereum protocol and like create their own version of it. They wouldn't have to change anything. They could just like fork Ethereum, create a new blockchain, and try to convince a bunch of people to run the nodes, run the network, create a decentralized uh, ecosystem and have like traders and holders and all that kind of stuff, right? But think about how many people you would need to convince to do that, right? That's why I don't think the chain's gonna split. If Usually whenever that happens, there's a big disagreement at the center of these changes and there's not. So if you'd even just go copy Ethereum without changing it, you'd still have to convince a bunch of people to do it. So there's not a good reason, I don't think. So that's my take on it. Again, I don't have a crystal ball. This is not financial advice. Leave a comment down below on what you think about whether the change is actually going to split into two blockchains.
All right, so I hope you all like this video. Be sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Click the like button down below. And as always, if you want to learn how to become a blockchain developer, learn how to build blockchain technology, you should join my free training on my website over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. All right, until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.